Now we're gonna practice solid sculpting. It's not gonna stay solid, but we're gonna start that way. So first we need to wedge our clay. Then um, you might need to cut it to size. So um, what size do you need? Well, I like to go for this project about the size of say two fists. It doesn't have to be exactly that, but around that side, too teeny tiny and it's gonna be hard to work with. So you want an initial shape, so I'm just kind of tapping it on the table, patting it, rolling it, depending on what you're making, it's gonna change um, how you're gonna uh, kind of go about that. I'm making a croissant, so I'm also starting to pinch the edges and elongate them so that I then have something that I could eventually curve inward. So notice I'm doing this in lots of little incremental, sta incremental stages, which is very similar to a lot of the other work that we've been doing. So you are maybe noticing that ceramics tends to happen in small stages instead of one big go. It's not always the case, but it's a good um, general kind of rule of thumb. So I might even paddle it. Again, depending on what object you're making, sometimes a paddle will work better for others. This is typically better for sort of rounded shapes. I won't be able to paddle on the inside curved area. You could also use this kind of plastic scraper or a kidney tool or a old um, credit card or you know gift card and that would work. But ultimately I'm going to use my fingers a lot. So I'm just kind of going around and I really want you to notice that I am not keeping um, in one area. I am addressing the entire form. This is a sculpture in the round. So I want to think about the entire piece. And in order to do that I need to look at the entire piece all the time. So turning it around as I go. It's really important that you have a reference photo in front of you while you're working so that you can make sure you have the correct um, proportions. A, a sketch would work as well, but don't wing it. Um, so now I wanna start to really mark out my forms. So you should have already drawn out the general um, shapes and objects that create your piece. And then you can draw this on with a needle tool, a pencil, a wooden stick, whatever. And that just helps you see where you're gonna start to really define that shape. Please make sure that you're thinking about the whole. How does something wrap around the form? So don't forget that it goes from front to back or side to side. So from here, I'm going to um, continue to shape it. I might scrape a little bit. Again, try a few different tools. You might try carving at this stage, but it's probable that your clay is gonna to be too soft and you might gouge out too much. So I would avoid using the, the loop tool for now. A benefit of working um, incrementally a little bit at a time is that you are less likely to make a irreversible mistake. Now in this part, I noticed that it needed to get rounded down a little bit. So I'm gonna do that here. Now you might find that you need to add some more clay to an area. It's super important that you score add slip or you know if you add water and then score again and then um, eventually the most important thing is that you don't create an air pocket in between your added piece so I've added slip I've scored I scored again now I'm going to basically roll this down and what that does is make sure that any air gets kind of pressed outward just like that so I don't want to just press it right on there and create a cup I want to roll it over and then I'm going to blend it on there Make sure that you're doing this at a fairly early stage so that you're not adding really wet clay to really dry clay. So this first part, forming your shape, is all about getting the right proportions, the right overall shapes, because then you can carve down and refine from there. Now, to carve down and refine, you do need to let it dry. There's a few options. You can just let it sit out, set a timer, don't forget it. You could give it a um, little bit of a sunbathing time. Please check it, feel it, keep a timer. You could take advantage of your oven if your household allows it. Don't go over 150 degrees. This works as basically a hot box. Put it on some foil so that you're not getting clay there. My favorite way is just to put it in a really kind of um, loose bag of plastic. And the reason why is because I can forget about it and I know it won't dry out all the way. So then you can go back and start to define your shapes. This is what you'll do probably um, a day later, especially if you leave it in plastic. That does need to sit um, in that bag over time. If you need to get to it sooner rather than later, then you should try giving it a sunbathe or using your oven or of course a hairdryer. Please make sure if you wanna use your oven that you check with people around you. And like I said, it cannot go over 150 degrees, um, 200 max, because at that point, clay uh, water starts to, instead of steaming out, it will start to boil out and that will destroy your piece.